when Marvel Comics and Tom Brevoort announced that he was leaving Avengers for X-Men, I think a lot of us were worried that Marvel Comics would just play their stupid little shell game where they take their big problem, aka Jordan White, all of his editors and writers at X-Men, and just move them on over to the Avengers, and then Tom Brevoort would take the talent that he was working on Avengers with and move them over to X-Men, and it appears that that is not happening, and me personally, I think this is probably a good move. I do not believe that Jordan White is going to be fired. I think he'll still have a job, but it certainly appears that he's getting demoted in the not-too-distant future once the fall of X is over and Krakoa is no more and Tom Brevoort takes over. How do we know this? Because Tom Brevoort pretty much said so. On his substack, he said, we're kicking off Avengers United with a 25-part story featuring the standing Avengers team, and after that, the series will be Will Moss's problem as the incoming Avengers editor. So it all really depends on how Will chooses to use it. I've liked playing around with the sorted characters and story types in Avengers Unlimited, but the analytics we were shown indicate clearly that longer stories are more likely to capture and retain readers, so I don't know how much we'll be pivoting back in that direction. So there you go. That 25-part story he's talking about is not going to be like an event or a crossover or something in Marvel Comics. It's going to be on the Marvel Unlimited app. Maybe afterwards they'll end up reprinting it. But I don't think anyone pays that stuff much mind. And that's not the big news here. Will Moss is taking over as the group editor for the Avengers, not Jordan White. Will Moss has been a senior editor at Marvel Comics for a long time, but he's never really been a group editor. And if you remember the last time they did one of these, I think it was Star Wars and X-Men, and they decided to move Jordan White from Star Wars over to X-Men, and they moved the X-Men group editor over to Star Wars. That dude's still in charge of Star Wars, but Jordan White is no longer going to be a group editor, it appears, unless he's going to be taking over Spider-Man. And I do not believe that Nick Lowe is excited to give up his spot as the Spider-Man group editor. And I also do not believe C.B. Cebulski and Tom Brevoort would allow somebody with as much failure on their ledger as Jordan White to take over the flagship hero, Spider-Man, and the associated characters and universes. That would come along with being the Spider-Man group editor. So this probably leaves Jordan White flapping in the wind to basically edit whatever stuff is left over. Like Will Moss recently has been editing stuff like Black Panther, Hulk, books like that that are associated with the Avengers, but not really mainline Avengers stuff. And we shall see what happens with Will Moss. This isn't so much an, an Avengers video, but... You know, Black Panther has been really bad for quite some time, and Hulk's been really good for a long time, actually, since Immortal Hulk, even though the, the second half of it wasn't great. A lot of people like the Donny Cates stuff on Hulk, and obviously the Phil Kennedy Johnson stuff has started out really well, so that guy's either hit or miss, and he's obviously going to be taking on an array of responsibilities when he takes over the, the Avengers line, and perhaps Jordan White will be like his new helper after just failing so hard. It's like you can't overstate just how much failure Jordan White has brought in, especially to the X-Men line. The first thing that he did, we're going to lead into Age of X-Men, and it turns out Uncanny X-Men only lasted for like 14 or 15 issues, even though he knew that Jonathan Hickman was taking over to do House of X Powers of 10, and it was just solely a cash grab. Absolutely pisses me off. Age of X-Men somehow was worse than a cash grab. It was absolutely a nothing event filled with just terrible creators. None of it really sold. Nobody was happy with any of it. And somehow Jordan White thinks that these are the people that should be the bedrock, the foundation for his new X-Men universe to back up Jonathan Hickman and all the amazing ideas that he had set in motion with House of X Powers of 10. Obviously, that all fell basically on top of him. And he just had such an assortment of terrible editors who could not identify good talent. And the biggest failure for Jordan White, you know, as a leader, somebody that was in the United States Air Force for 20 years, I retired as a senior NCO Sometimes you get put in a position where somebody that you're leading, somebody that's under your charge, maybe isn't up to snuff. Maybe they're not ready for the big leagues. Maybe they're not ready to even do the basic components of their job, but you have to do the best that you can. And eventually, if you find out what they're good at, what their real weak points are, work with them, you can get something productive out of them. They get better over time. And that's the real failure of Jordan White. Nobody got better in the X-Men office over time. I thought Ben Percy started out pretty good on X-Force and Wolverine, basically got worse over time. Leah Williams, I guess the best thing she's ever written is Amazing Mary Jane or whatever. Everything she wrote in the X-Men office was pretty lackluster. Steve Orlando wasn't a great writer at DC Comics, but he did have good stories here and there. Everything that he's written at Marvel Comics, especially in the X-Men office, has been so far under standard of what he did at DC Comics, you can tell that Jordan White doesn't understand 
the the key components of leadership, you have to identify who you're working with, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and make them better, make them more productive. Can you honestly tell me anybody that worked with him that was more productive after joining the X-Men office than they were before? it? No, none, none whatsoever. Almost all of them got worse. And that's an enormous black mark on Jordan White's reputation and legacy as the X-Men group editor. And I imagine that's one of the main reasons he's not taking over the Avengers line. That and I guess uh, Tom Brevoort and C.B. Sabolsky have more faith that Will Moss will be able to run that ship and not absolutely destroy the entire Avengers line. But that is not all that's being cleaned out of. Apparently with Jordan White also goes a lot of other people. Some of these people have actually confirmed that. Jerry Duggan has basically confirmed on his sub stack that he's going to be leaving. I believe Kieran Gillen has confirmed he's leaving. Al Ewing has all but confirmed he's going to be leaving the X-Men office. But Jerry Duggan also provided some more information as I said, via his substack, when senior editor Jordan D. White passes the X to incoming mutant rookie Tom Brevoort, the sun will set on the Krakoan age. We swung big. However, if you're interested in seeing a different take on the X-Men, then you've got good news coming in 2024 as well. New editors, new creators, new stories. And in the end, isn't that what most of you want out of comics? The new. Tom is often fond of saying that life is too short for bad comics. I can't wait to return to being a fan of the X-Men and see what happens next. New editors, new creators, new stories. And I do believe in this case that people are excited for new and new being a return to an actual status quo that makes sense for the X-Men. Actually reverting maybe back to the mansion or anything that would make people love and respect the X-Men again. They've just become, I don't know, this enormous assortment of villains on Orgy Island and it never really fit the characters of the team or the dream of Charles Xavier. And they basically have perverted everything that Chris Claremont put in so much time and effort to create. And a lot of other people came in after him and really built out the X-Men mythos. There's a reason it's one of the flagship titles. There's a reason that you can make movies about this team. And it's not because of Orgy Island. It's because of what was established before this that actually worked. Admittedly, Jonathan Hickman was taking some chances, but it felt like he had somewhere to go and a story to tell with a definitive ending in sight. And they just decided to verge from that. And we definitely need new editors, new creators, new everything. It sounds like we're getting that. I don't think any of the writers are going to be sticking around. Hopefully Steve Fox is gone. Hopefully Steve Orlando is gone. Vita Ayala basically is already gone. Lee Williams also already seems to be gone. Hopefully Charlie Jane Anders is gone. Uh, there's just a lot of writers that needed to go. Jerry Duggan was one of them. And I don't think Jerry Duggan is the worst writer in the world. And I know I crap on him a lot. But if you go read his Conan stuff, pretty damn good. If you go read his Savage Avengers stuff, pretty damn good. If you go read his Invincible Iron Man stuff, maybe not so good. Go read his Deadpool with Jeff Posehn. Actually, pretty fun stuff, but I don't know if he was ever... He's like he's not a headliner. It never made sense that he would have been the guy writing the flagship X-Men book. He's just not that guy. He's the number nine hitter. He's not your cleanup hitter. You know what I mean? There's not enough star power. There's not enough creativity, and there's just not enough interest in Jerry Duggan as a writer. Kieran Gillen uh, maybe is a bigger name. Al Ewing certainly isn't a bigger name. Another you know, competent writer, somebody that you want on the team, but he shouldn't be headlining stuff. And I think it's a smart move to just move all those people out. Hopefully Cy Sprayer goes with them. You know, I guess he was like their little buddy. He was like a tag along or something on a lot of these X-Men events where he had been a key contributor on the creative part, but he wouldn't really write any of it because, you know, he's Cy Sprayer and nobody knows who he is. And the people that do know who he is aren't really going to support him because he's just, uh, he's failed so many times. But, you know, he needs to go too. They just need to clean all of them out. The only people I would be surprised if they didn't leave was, is probably Ben Percy. He feels like he's their Wolverine guy. Not only he's been riding X-Force, he's got that Predator Wolverine thing. He also wrote the Wolverine like audio dramas for, for Spotify or whatever it was on. I don't remember which one. He wrote two of those for Marvel, and I do think they see him as like their uh, Wolverine guy for some reason. You know, and Ben Percy, with good direction and good backup from editorial, I do think has a, has a chance to deliver the goods. But, you know, he's kind of worn out as welcome. Another name that I would be surprised if they didn't leave, or if they did leave, actually, is Torn Grunbeck, who's been doing some work in the X-Men office, but doing more work for the Avengers office. It seems like that's somebody that uh, Tom Revort is invested in as being someone that he sees a future for in Marvel Comics. I have yet to see it. 
uh, not the worst writer in the world, certainly not Tini Howard or anything like that, but doesn't seem to have the makings of being a superstar. Wouldn't be surprised to see Torn Grunbeck maybe focusing more on the X-Men moving forward because of that Tom Brevoort stuff. Also, uh, Jed McKay seems to be Tom Brevoort's guy right now. He's been hopping around a lot of the major characters in the in the Avengers universe. Obviously, he's writing Avengers right now. Would not be surprised to see Jed McKay moving over to the X-Men office. Another couple of names that I don't want to see happen, but I almost guarantee it will. Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig appear to be people that Tom Brevoort feels like he can count on. I almost count on them writing something I like. They're going to write the next Nightcrawler thing, my favorite X-Men character, really my favorite Marvel hero and I'm going to be like, oh, great, more Nightcrawler that I can't read because you got bad writers on it. So this isn't guaranteed to get a whole lot better, but I do think it will get noticeably better because uh, Tom Brevoort seems to be more professional, has a better reputation, and certainly has a track record of success on Avengers that Jordan White doesn't really have anywhere. And it appears Marvel Comics have noticed that as well. But maybe Donny Cates is feeling better in the not-too-distant future, it seems like. He was definitely a Brevort guy. Donny Cates on a major X-Men title would be very exciting stuff, or maybe a miniseries here and there. So we shall see what happens, but uh, those are happening. We're, we're wiping out Jordan White. We're wiping out the editorial. We're wiping out the creators for the most part. I would imagine a couple of them stick around, but it looks like Tom Brevort is bringing his own people in. But all of the pain is not over yet. Yes, we are getting the rise of the House of X and the rise of the Powers of Ted. What a god-awful name. I understand that you want us to remember Jonathan Hickman and the exciting stuff he did like four or five years ago. But pick out a better name, man. You've been coattail riding Jonathan Hickman for enough years now. They they could have come up with something better as far as a name. But the, the last thing that will truly be awful, just completely unreadable, I mentioned his name earlier. As the X-Men face their darkest hour in the upcoming fall of the House of X, several key heroes will be returning from the afterlife to help save mutant kind and the all-new dead X-Men the four-issue limited series will follow the resurrection of Cannibal, Frenzy, Prodigy, Jubilee, and Dazzler. The new X-Men murdered at the Hellfire Gala by Orcas as they embark on a reality-bending quest from Charles Xavier in an attempt to save Krakoa. Marvel's announcement of dead X-Men from writer Steve Fox reveals the resurrected X-Men's journey could reverse Krakoa's tragic fate as the five heroes travel throughout the past. Reveals the resurrected X-Men's journey could reverse Krakoa's tragic fate as the five heroes travel throughout the past. Not a damn headliner in their cannonball frenzy prodigy Jubilee and Dazzler. A team befitting someone as untalented as Steve Fox. And uh, I don't, this is why Jordan White and the Legion of Doofuses needed to leave X Men two years ago because of shit like dead X Men. Talk about a dead franchise. Like, why is this dude even still writing anything? He has yet to write a competent panel in a Marvel Comics comic book, let alone a page, let alone a story, let alone an issue. Like, it's, it's absolutely insane. This is the dude that did Sun Spider or whatever the like gay Spider-Man that's a seamstress idea. That was his fucking idea. And like, this guy is going to be, do one of the final stories of X-Men on the way out the door. It's like way, way to remind everybody why you should have been uh, let go of a long time ago, Jordan White, and should have been reassigned to something else more within your capability set. Like taking out the trash, maybe vacuuming. Uh, maybe you could have cleaned the windows or something. And Marvel Comics probably would have benefited greater than ever letting you be in charge of anything. Like, I just I can't believe this guy uh, destroyed the entire X-Men line. He knows that they're rebooting the entire thing because he has no talent, and every idea that he comes up with is <laughs> just terrible. Let's get Steve Fox another miniseries on the way out the door, and we can remind people why they should be so fucking grateful that Tom Brevoort, of all people, was taking over something he clearly doesn't even really have all that much interest in. You could tell Tom Brevoort's heart is not with the X-Men. It's certainly with the Avengers. But Marvel Comics had to make this change because the Avengers, while being very important, certainly a tentpole uh, franchise in movies, is not a tentpole franchise in comic books. or certainly hasn't been for the majority of its run in comic books. You know, X-Men is the franchise. X-Men is the tentpole. And basically, Jordan White and the Legion of Doofuses chop the tentpole down, turn it into kindling, and burn it on fire while they laughed at us and said, hey, chuds, enjoy Orgy Island and all the stupid stuff we're doing with your characters that you like. Haha, ha, we're going to get the last laugh. Well, turns out failure isn't completely appreciated and accepted at Marvel Comics anymore. And this is probably a long time coming. I've explained this a lot, but this really breaks down why Jordan White is at the crux, at the heart 
of why X-Men had been failing for so many years now. This guy was completely incompetent. Nobody ever got better the entire time they were in the X-Men office. Absolute insanity right here. There's also a link in the video description.